big thank you for all our viewers. Uh, once again, I'm your host, Olani Ajilori, uh, the news uh, publisher for Reference Daily News, and my co-host, Sunday King Bondere. Today is also an author. Uh, we have uh, a very unique uh, guest in our midst joining us live from London, UK. Again, I want to say thank you for honoring our invitation. We will go straight to it. So we would like you to tell us um, wh what social work is all about. Uh, thank you, Olani. Social work is um, actually, uh, well, I, it's an academic discipline and practice that is, you know, based, you know, professionally and concerned with meeting the basic needs of individuals, families, groups, communities and society as a whole um, to enhance, to be able to enhance social functioning, solving social problems and promoting social responsibilities. Thank you so much for that wonderful um, description. Um, you know, we know the work of social worker in, in the societies is very enormous and uh, you know, because I used to work in the in the nursing facility myself when I was in the, in college, and uh, we do really appreciate the work of social work social workers, um, because of course we, without them the the, the job of uh, you know nursing the elderly is almost impossible, or even anybody for that matters, uh, especially in the Western world. Um, my second question to you is that as a foreigner. And of course, a social worker, can you compare and, and contrast uh, the level of religion tolerance, of course, in your city there in London, UK, uh, you know, with, with what, what is obtained in, in Nigeria? Uh, before, before we go on, Olani, let me quickly correct something. Okay. Um, I am not a social worker by profession. Okay. All right by inclination, by deeds. Okay. A lot of people do refer to me as one. I okay. actually, yeah, I'm a health manager. I okay. work in clinical administration. Okay. I work in health management. But you see, okay. they are intertwined. Of they, course. Obviously, of course. They, are, they are intertwined. But it, we live in a modern world and in a world that we have got to be specific okay. in case someone comes around and starts <laughs> questioning you know and as well i like to correct that uh, project ferry was actually founded by mutilola mutilola is a popular actress in nigeria okay. but you know uh, yes i was asked to join in and um what we did was you remember um two years ago and up until last year when we had uh, myriad of our girls in the United Arab Emirates and other such countries okay. um, whom their plight was being brought to public. So Mutilolas and, and her friend, you know, I forgot her name in America, they came together, brought me in just so we can help our girls come back home from these countries where they were being uh, almost dehumanized. Okay. and being treated like they were less of a human being. But wow. then I have, I have um, a charity in Nigeria, which is mainly based on caring for the aged in our society mm. and for young people as well. Wow. So that is that, that is that as it is. Um, um, comparing religious tolerance in the UK and in Nigeria, yes, may not be at par, but that is not to say that religious intolerance does not exist in the UK as well. More so that I am one of those that do not believe in comparing um, the way you know things are done or run in developed countries as against. Uh, the way things are done in Nigeria. That's not to say that we cannot borrow from the good things that we see in developed countries. Religious tolerance, 
Um, I, 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 let me start with the UK. Let me start with the UK, for instance. Bear in mind that we still have underaged marriages. We still, you know, it's taking place amongst some, you know, ethnic minorities in the UK vis-a-vis -vis oh. the Pakistani, the Bangladeshi, you know, and so on and so forth. We have... Um, that is that, by the way, religious intolerance in the UK, we have certain Muslims who will not respect the spaces of certain Christians and vice versa. So it is, it happens here in the UK, just like it does in Nigeria. It's just, you know, if we want to say at what rate, at what ratio, we may say it is more pronounced I don't want to say prevalent, it is more pronounced in Nigeria than we have in the UK, only because we have um, government departments that are able to deal with it um, a lot of times when the rare, when incidents of religious intolerance rest, it's ugly head. That's the difference basically, but not to say that we do not have it. We wow. have had occurrences in the UK when people of the Christian and Muslim faith stood up against one another at a protest. I can name so many, but no, for the sake of time, we leave it like that. But yes, there is religious intolerance everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Wow. Thank you so much for that wonderful, um, of course. Not, it is not unique to Nigeria. It is not unique to Nigeria. Of course. And, and, and that's why we want to actually get from, you know, someone like you, um, of course, that is living overseas. So you're able to share more light on the contrast or, you know, again. So, so if, if I should uh, further ask a question about when you say, people practice that in place like the UK or in London to be precise. Again, is it in the law, um, you know, of course, for, for people to be able to do that, are they going to be able to get away with it if the government is able to find out that somebody is married to, again, that we still even have another question in regards to marrying a younger age kids and all that. But again, so what, what would be the response of the government or UK government if they find out of such um, of things happening, like a young child is being married out, because for sure I know it's against the law. If you're not over 18, I believe, or 17 in the UK, US is 18 um, before you can, because you have to be mature enough to decide for yourself. Um, no, in America, you can have people as younger. You know how America operates in you know, um, different states with different laws. In certain states in America, a 16-year-old can be married, you know, obviously with parental consent. And, you know, here in the UK as well, um, yes, people younger than 18, were they to be married, yeah, they, they have to have parental consent as well. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. That's good to know. And uh, to, your, to, your, to your question about um, what government does, there are obviously government agencies that fight um, social issues, uh, bordering on, um, bordering on underage marriages or forced marriages at that, you know. And we say this because often, um, among the Muslims, it comes to the fore. You have young people run away from home, run to government shelter to pronounce what their experiences are. We may not know, we don't hear much of that from the Christian fold. That's not to say it still does not exist because bear in mind, religion and culture as well are intertwined. And most That's of right. these underage marriages, forced marriages, you know, they are mostly culturally related. Okay, of course, of course. Yeah. All right, uh, Tunde. The, the, government, the government agencies are in place. We have government agencies in place to tackle, say for instance, uh, I mean, I, I give a case of a young girl who was uh, forced to Pakistan to marry a cousin and she made her way back somehow. Uh, she made her way to the British embassy in Pakistan and um, obviously she was given support, she was given support and she was 
brought back to the UK under the care of the government. She was uh, taken to a foster parent and um, she came out of the marriage. And there's so many cases like that. So we have these government agencies who deal with such social norms. Wow. Thank you, sir. Thank if only we will have our systems work for us in Nigeria. Wow. Um, thank you so much, sir. Thanks for your question, sir. I think I'll be taking it from home. Uh, the person of actually having issues with um, religions in Nigeria actually started from the point now. And then that's what I want to address at this point. You know, uh, there's been an age long narrative in the system for parents to actually say that children should not get married to, you know. Children who came from all their religions went to the fact that um, they are not willing to subject themselves to that other religion or because they are scared of the adherence of that religion. So I'd like to push this question to you. As a woman who is a Muslim, would you subscribe to your daughter getting married to Christian in the first place? Uh, if you, uh, yeah, because today is my friend, um, if you, saw my post this morning. In fact, I didn't know this was gonna come up. Around about three o'clock this morning, I put up a post that said, um, you, um, how is it called? Love does not see the age of the partner and it happens when it is destined to. That's what I want to bring up. Love happens when and where it is destined to. If you're asking me personally, as a Muslim woman, I will not and cannot object to my child, boy or girl child, marrying a Christian partner. No, I will not. I was also not raised by a father who will say his children as Muslims not to be married to Christians. I have an older sister who is in her 60s, and uh, she's actually a deaconess in the redeemed you know, church, and we're very close, we're very close sisters, regardless that I practice my Muslim faith while she practices her Christian faith. Wow, wow, that's just too beautiful. Because I think that's, that's one of the foundations of a religious intolerance in Nigeria as a country, because you see, the same foundation the basis, the, the basis, the basis. Yeah, it's that's, from the, that's, it's that's from the home. It's from the it's from the home. Thank you, man. So um, at this point, I think um, I have to talk about practical aspects of um, what we are currently discussing, and I mean what actually triggered the discussion in the first place. In the course of the weeks, there was um, a news, a touching news of a girl who was actually lynched or brutally murdered by elite students who felt shocked. She actually uttered some kind of um, blasphemous statements and the two there in Nigeria and the northern part of this country. I like to ask you at this point in time because um, you know laymen like us are confused as far as the position of the only Quran in respect to you know partial blasphemous statements against the person of the only prophet. So I like to ask you at this point that is there a point or is there a section of the only Quran that actually subscribes to the fact that whoever, you know, all seven is that so much against Prophet Muhammad is liable to be, you know, lynched or, you know, brutally murdered. Um, thank you, Tunde. There is nowhere in the Holy Quran where it is written that if anyone blasphemes the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that person should be killed. No place in the Quran. Islam is a religion of peace and every religion in the world is based on love. Um, if, you, if you remember um, Tunde, Olani and uh, maybe the rest of us, um, when Mohammed Ali said something about lakes, rivers, streams, uh, you know, that they all have different names, but they all contain water. 
just as religions do, they contain truth. Every religion contains truth. Every religion preaches peace. Every religion preaches love. It is the interpretation, especially cultural connotations that people give to their faith that brings about other uh, issues like the unfortunate one that happened you know, to the poor girl that lost her soul, uh, Deborah, may the Lord repose her soul and comfort her people. Thank you so much. There's no, there's no way in the Quran. There, there are so many, in, in fact, before, even before the incident of Deborah, I'll I give you a quick example. In one of our universities in the Southwest, many years ago, many years ago, there was a, you may have heard about it because um, you gentlemen are in the press. You are gentlemen of the press. Remember, oh gosh, is it Yinka? I, 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 her name may come to me in the course of this discussion. This young lady went to the mosque a, or in, in the university. It was on a Friday and uh, they, 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 they had done the call to prayer. They had said the Friday prayers. And just after the Friday prayers, while people were still gathered in the mosque at the university, this young woman put up her public address systems and was preaching the gospel. She was she was, pardon? She was she, she, thank you, in, in, it happened in UI, thank you very much. I don't know if your if your platform will permit me to mention names of institutions. Thank you course, for permitting me. Pardon? I said, of course, you are allowed to, to say to say that to mention. Thank names. you. Yeah. So the, 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 this woman, you know, put up a public address system and was preaching the Christian gospel. Do you know, the Muslims did. The Muslim students took offense, but look at the way it was revolved. It was resolved. We cannot compare the way the case of Sheung, you know, which is, you know, which bordered on blasphemy as well. You know, we cannot compare the way it was resolved to the way that Deborah's one was resolved. If you get what I mean, in Sheung's case, she was sheltered. She was presented. It went to court. You know, they passed judgment. But then you know, there were plead, you know, to save her life. And this is it. That's because in the Southwest of Nigeria, where we come from, we tend to be more tolerant and we can't cover our mouth to say that. The generality of us in the Southwest are more religious tolerant. That is not to say there is not religious intolerance because I can say to you, if you go to places like Shaki, if you go to places like Igboho, these are towns, big towns in the Southwest, you see a Christian trader may not want to relate to a Muslim trader and they are one opposite the other, trading in the same things or in the same area, you get my point. So, but, you know, it is mostly prevalent, religious intolerance, it's mostly preva prevalent in the northern part of Nigeria, which is rather unfortunate. Now, she would have been, you know, statistics as well in the regards of people that were murdered for, bl for blaspheming, you see, but that did not happen to poor she, she lives. Unfortunately, Deborah, because in the part of the country where the blasphemy you know, the alleged blasphemy took place. It's so, you know, prevalent that they are very intolerant of all the religion. I mean, it is simply put, we can't sugarcoat it. And our government needs to work hard on that. Thank you so much. And this is where I am, you know, I preach that the Nigerian Orientation Agency has got work on their hands. They have work to do. Informing people, bringing awareness to the people down into the rural areas. 
it is not only when incidents occur, even before we have incidents, we have to teach the people, we have to educate the people, we have to enlighten the people, we have to make them aware. Wow, thank you so much. My thanks for that brilliant answer to my question. Um, in the course of your discussion, you mentioned the fact that there's no portion of the program that talks about the fact that um, whoever commits blasphemy as offense should be killed. But don't you consider it possible that some, you know, there are different um, sections of, um, you know, uh, Quran, not even Quran per se, that what we call the Igma, uh, Igma is totally different from the Holy Quran. I think it's the consensus of the judge. I we have different of scholars, most especially, we have scholarly opinions. Don't you think this guy's must have left great on his scholarly opinion? Because, um, yes, thank you. The you see, the, the issue of um, blasphemers being murdered, as you rightly said, is, um, is something that came up. It, it, I, I maintain it is not written anywhere in the Quran. And let it be known that the Quran is only one all over the world. We do not have the revised version, we do not have Osman Dan Fodio version. We do not have Sheikh Abibullah uh, version. We do not like have um, uh, uh, Sheikh Adabiya version. There is no version of the Quran. There is only one Quran. Such that we want to make excuses that, oh, it may have been misinterpreted. No, there's only one Quran. What about the each man? But, each man? but you see, the, the scholars, we have we have different scholars who believe. You, you, you see, this is why where and why I mentioned that. Sometimes culture is brought into religion. Now, some scholars may wake up and think, hang on a minute. We love Prophet Muhammad so much. In Islam, Prophet Muhammad is what we love so much. We love him more than our fathers. We love him more than our mothers. We love, even though the Quran says, your mother mm -hmm. is whom you should respect most. You have scholars that will come up and say, we respect Muhammad more than our mothers, more than our fathers, more than our teachers. So you see, it's a coming together of scholars like this, who, who reason in this manner, they came together and they believe because Muhammad, peace be upon him, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is so revealed it's so in high esteem that if you said anything against him, you must be put to death in a certain way. It is a submission of a group of scholars. After all, it is the same Muhammad. When he lived, I'll share this very quickly. In the days of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, there was a gentleman who used to put sun, you know, how sharp sun is and you know when it pricks you how hurtful that can be and it gives you sauce all over your body when the prophet peace be upon him is going to the mosque with his followers this gentleman will put sun on the road he will put even feces on the road and um it came a day that and each time his followers complained. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, replied by saying, oh no, no, do not be angry with him. Do not make trouble with him. Do not fight him. It came a day, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was going along the same way to prayers. He did not see the feces with which the man used to litter his path to the mosque. He did not see the sun with which the man used to, you know, lay on the path to the mosque. And Muhammad got back home and said, go and look for the man. We go there. He went to see the man. Mm -hmm. 
for you to understand the tolerance of Islam, the tolerance of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He, he went to the man's house with his followers, then discovered that the man was sick. He prayed for him. The man got well. And when he became well, he actually converted to Islam, saying, if a man that I detest so much, that I hated so much, that I always plan to hurt, that I always try to disturb his movement, if he can show so much love, so much compassion, and even come to visit me on my sick bed, he is worthy of a man to follow. He converted and he became a Muslim. So if Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, leave that kind of life, what does that say to us, the followers of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? But then nowadays we have all sorts of things, just like we have in the Christian faith too. We have the Wahhabism, you know, whom they come, this sect of Islam, they come and they, here are the people that will say to you, we have our cultures in the southwest of Nigeria where we kneel down to greet our parents and boys prostrate to greet their parents. Now, the Wahhabis will say to you, no, you cannot do that. No, you cannot kneel down. You cannot prostrate to, to greet your parents. Oh, if your mother offends you, you can chat back to your mother. All you need to do is to go and buy some evaporated milk or some fresh milk and give to her, which, which means paying back the breast milk that you had suckled from the best of breast of your mother while she was nursing and nurturing you. Come on. So this is where we see, you know, a whole lot of times culture gets intertwined. You know, these scholars that came together to say, kill whoever blasphemes, that is their own thought. Mm. But unfortunately, a whole lot of people these days are buying into it. It is rather unfortunate and it has got to be looked into by the government in Nigeria. It has really got to be looked into. So at this point, I think um, I should put the dialogue in the interview back to the post who will continue from that. Sorry, today I could barely hear you. Oh. Oh, it's going to take it from here. My, my host to take it from here, Ma. Okay, thank you. Lani, thank you. Thank you today. Um, I, let me, I want to rest, I want to do a little follow-up to something that I, maybe I missed it. I'm not sure. When you say something about, as a Muslim, uh, someone that's practicing, you know, Islamic faith, that you can allow your daughter or your son to marry to a Christian or other religion. Do I hear you correct or... Oh, you just yes, you heard, you heard me. You heard me correctly. Okay, so it, so why? What would be the reason why? Um, you know, instead of let love prevail, you said no. You have to be because of your religion. And is there any verse that backed that up in the Quran, or is it just a belief system thing? I mean, not belief. It always just a doctrine thing, or your own personal preference. It is not only based on my preference. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, the, the Quran says to us that um, in the in the Adid, it says we should make friends okay. with the people of the I'm, I'm, of, sorry of to, the, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interject. You see, Adid was written not by you know, again, I'm talking about from Quran. So Adid is different and of course the Quran is different. I don't want us to go too deep into it. But I'm saying is there any place in the Quran that back it up? Because I, I believe in Quran. I, I tell I, you I, I, I tell didn't, you, I didn't believe you, in Adit. If if you if you if you look at the six articles of faith, if you don't mm -hmm. want you know that we mentioned Adit, look mm -hmm. at the six articles of faith. What okay. does it involve? Having faith in faith itself having faith in the angels, having faith in the books. What are the books? The books that are revealed 
Okay. To so, prophets. And there are what, many books. What are the books? Many books. What are the books? Yeah. Okay, let's mention a few. The Quran was revealed to okay. the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. The Bible is for the Christians. Mm -hmm. the, the book of Psalms mm -hmm. was revealed to David, Dawood in Islam. Mm -hmm. And the Torah to Moses. Mm -hmm. um, Prophet, Prophet Musa, like we, call, like we call him in Islam. Right. Now, we are instructed in the Quran that... We believe in the books. So if the Quran says, believe in the books, who am I to say that the, 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 the book of the Christian faith, because my child has brought somebody from the Christian faith or even from the, you know, traditional African mm. religion. Come right. on, there are so many religions. It right. could be the Grey Movement. It could be Rosicrucian. Mm -hmm. It could be Hinduism. Of course. And so on and so forth. There's so many religions. What is important is where we can find, you know, where we can establish peace, mm -hmm. where we can establish love, where we can establish harmonious living. Where we can prosper, good and positive togetherness. So, so I see that where. So your answer is yes. That's where my. That's so your answer, where my son is going. Why not? Oh, okay, okay. Why not? That's what I. That's what I want to clarify. Okay, thank you so much. Um, oh, yeah. you may not. You may not have heard me right. When two yes, asked yes. the question, I did say that. Okay. I I will. Okay. I will. Okay. Allow my child and children to marry from whatever faith that they find love in. Okay, fine. That's, that's, and that's, I went that's, on to say that I have an older sister okay. who is actually a deaconess in the redeemed faith and who we live happily together. All right. We're very close with my best friend. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's very progressive and that's, that is, uh, that's uh, very nice to hear because we have some people that are very extreme with their religion, belief, and all that. And that, so to me, caused a lot of frictions. Um, I would do a little, uh, oh, well, my third questions, or the, what, the, you know, there's going to be about 50 questions today, is that, of course, Sharia constitutes a, a broad set of rules uh, that guide Muslims on how to lead an ethical life. Uh, ethical life. Um, you see, there are a lot of questions about does Muslim, uh, I mean, does Sharia uh, require punishment by stoning? Of course, it's been predominantly happening in the developing country or underdeveloped country. They are missing their culture with, the, of course, with their religion or what they were taught about how it's Islam or no other way. So does the Sharia uh, require you know, punishment like stoning? Uh, which is jungle justice, of course, like the one that happened to uh, Deborah. Yes, uh, there are yes there are judgments in the Sharia law that borders on stoning, that borders on decapitating, and so on and so forth. But I I say this: we have a huge Muslim community in the United Kingdom. We have a huge Muslim community in. In the, in the Americas, in the United States. Mm -hmm. We have huge Muslim following in France, mm -hmm. even in Belgium, in mm -hmm. Switzerland, mm -hmm. and across the world. Mm -hmm. And in all of your years of reporting news, I am sure you're yet to hear of any of these countries executing someone by stoning to death when we have, you know, organizations like Amnesty International campaigning fervently against stoning, stoning people to death in the countries where it exists. Mm -hmm. You mentioned progression earlier. We have to move with the world that we live in as well. Because when we talk of Sharia, Sharia, these laws are written by people. Mm. Only 
yesterday or day before, was it, President Muhammad Buhari enacted an electoral law. Mm -hmm. That law can be amended mm -hmm. where it is resolved eventually that it be mm -hmm. amended. Mm -hmm. I have I have not seen anywhere in developed countries that people are being stoned to death. <laughs> it's even, even an animal is not possible. <laughs> I, have a, I have a cat. If, if, my, if my cat meals, the next, my next reaction will be, what could be wrong with Shegun? His name is Shegun. What could be wrong with Shegun? <laughs> Why is Shegun meowing? <laughs> how much? How much more snuff snuffing human life out of people in such such despicable manner, such inhuman manner? Hmm. Wow. So I am one, you know, of those and many of us across the world who believe that the Sharia laws have got to be looked into and honestly, have got to be made even more progressive, more conversant with the world that we live in today. So, 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 so what do you say about the faith? If a book like that is written and it's supposed to be a guideline, that actually uh, all the, you know, of course, the people that practice the faith should follow as an ethical life behavior or like, you know, the way they, you know, do all their things. So if not, because to me, I don't think you can take that anywhere. It, it, unlike, unlike a worldly um, laws, whereby, of course, we have a president that's in, uh, elected. They make a law, uh, they are not laws, then people can have, you know, down the road, amend them. But we're talking about something that is written, passed down, generation over, you know, so people probably not going to buy that. So my question is, when things like this is actually written there, don't you think that we make people, uh, all these people that, of course, the education is not that strong, maybe be influenced to use that as their excuse to do all these things, like again, cutting people's finger because it's still a loaf of bread. Uh, of course, jungle justice, stoning people to death. Uh, what, what does that say about the faith in general? I'm talking about Islamic faith now. Um, let me start by you know, saying to you that uh, in the, the, the Romans of the past and pre the time of the Romans, Many centuries ago, people of other places, including the Anglo Saxons, they had very, very Machiavellian, very, very harsh laws as well. But then they progressed with time. What's the audio? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Islam as a religion is not by itself in advancement. See, we have in the days of yore, when similar things took place, if, even up to medieval days, you have people that were punished in very, very inhuman ways. Now, when the laws of Sharia's were being enacted. Where's the dance is coming from you today? What's going you know, on? What are you doing? This? Go ahead, madam. Go ahead. Yeah. This way, in ages that I'll say were even pre stone age. So there were days where they were just moving away even from cannibalism, mm. you know, open and general cannibalism, if you get what I mean. So, of course. you know, they, 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 they wrote the laws according to what they knew at the time. Mm. So 
So how about in the days where we have gone beyond that? How mm. about in the days where humanity is what comes to the fore? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about advancement in that manner? There were a lot of things that were done in the Old Testament that mm -hmm. so many Christians no longer apply today. Mm -hmm. So many laws that were passed down in the Old Testament, which hardly applies today. Actually, the, the Bible actually says no one should even follow them, the old laws. The Bible actually recorded that, obviously, because most of these, uh, you know, law of Moses and all that, all those deities in the past. Um, all right. So let's talk about um, solutions or that you think can be proposed or you know, I see you earlier talking about the government should do better on, you know, how they help educate the, the, the people. Um, so what do you think can be done to curb this, the rate at which the Nigerian, uh, uh, the religion fight themselves in Nigeria? I'm talking about people fighting people who don't believe in what they believe in. Uh, like, the, of course, the one that's happening in the North, especially. Um, <clears throat> before I go to that, um, we're going to go into likely solutions, but then when we look at what happened to the gentleman sound engineer in Lagos as well, mm -hmm. you and I know that was not bothered on religion. Of course. Of course. What does that, what does that tell us? It's intolerant. It's intolerance, yeah, leadership and intolerance. In, yeah. in, 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 intolerance. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, this talk tonight is bothered on religious intolerance, mm -hmm. Nigeria and the need for religious tolerance. What is religious tolerance? It is the ability to appreciate and acknowledge spiritual values, beliefs, and practices that dip, that differ from ours. Mm -hmm. If you are of a religion that differs from mine, religious tolerance means that I respect your faith. Right. I value your faith. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge the fact that you are of that faith. Mm -hmm. And it not coming in the way of our relationship, mm -hmm. of our friendship of our comradeship, of our colleagueship, of our marriage ship, and of all of the sheep mm -hmm. that we may think of. Mm -hmm. Now, why religious intolerance? A lot of people in our society, different, you know, <clears throat> people in our society, you know, should know that there is um, the need for individuals within a society to get along and where a variety of cultures and people with different religious beliefs live in one community or a nation, we have to relate with togetherness all the same. Mm. But because some of us, we cannot, maybe because of our culture, mm. which is where you find, oh, yesterday's that says, yesterday is a Christian, she cannot be married to Timothy, that is, uh, that is, uh, uh, sorry, yesterday is Christian, and she, the father says she cannot be married to, um, <laughs> to, what's his name, Ahmed. Mm -hmm. who is Muslim, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. It is human intolerance that brought about religious intolerance. Fantastic. If, you are, if you are tolerant as a human, you mm -hmm. will be tolerant with regards to religion. Simple. Simple. And where we find that our nation 
it's going down in manner like this is where we're shouting there's need for the orientation agency to buckle up and do something quick. Why religious intolerance? Because, oh, I don't like her. Oh, I just don't like the way he, he, he does things. Oh, he thinks he's the only one. These are little things mm. that brings about intolerance. As small as, oh, why does he think he's the one? Why does Alani think Oh, he's, he's the only one in this company and so on and so forth. And then people begin to build, you know, this big intolerance, which will then burst into religious intolerance. Then maybe Ahmed finds out, oh, so after all, my colleague Olani is a Christian. Forgetting, I mean, not bringing to the fore that, he had actually disliked Olaniyi because he thinks Olaniyi was too big for the shoes he's wearing. Hmm. It's religious intolerance is a spillover of human intolerance. When we need to tolerate ourselves as humans, then we will do better even with religious intolerance. Wow. That's, that's amazing. If we, train, if we train our kids from home to be tolerant human beings, mm -hmm. you know, life is about nurture and nature, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Most of the time we grow up with values that we have been nurtured and trained in. Except nowadays where we have young people who can come and say to you, oh no, mom, what you have asked me to do is not actually right. Mm -hmm. In the days that we were growing, you couldn't say that to your parents. Mm -hmm. So when your parents say to you, oh, no, you must. Now, it has happened to me before. Mm. I remember the very young days when I came home and said I wanted to be with the house of fellow. My father, even as educated as he was, my family being an educated family, my father was against it. <laughs> Purely because he thought, how can his daughter go so far away? Hmm. How, oh. how, will he, is, how will his daughter go so far away from him? No, it can, it's not going to happen. But then he was not intolerant. He only gave his excuse that you'll be too far away from home. We don't know what can happen to you at any time. You have to rush home. No, we don't want that. I'm sure there are other gentlemen that will be interested in being with you. You can please make a choice. So it wasn't like, oh, because of that person's person. And for him, it was just the thought of having to go far away. Hmm. So, so ma'am, so if I hear you right, of course, you said the, the government and some agencies to do more work to bring awareness to people tolerating others. That it's not even more about religion per se, it's just human being not tolerating another fellow human being. So, but what listen, is Olani, yes, all religion, mm -hmm. all religion teach goodness, okay, truthfulness, okay. All religion oppose evil. So why should we then be intolerant of one another? Um, honestly, let me even say my own background. Of course, I grew up from a traditionalist uh, background. I remember growing up, we do not, to, to, to my grandpa and my uncle that are very embedded with that culture, with that, of course, with that traditional stuff, they, they were like, the Christians, especially people that, that pray around, that, you know, that go around and preach, they believe that they are liars because they think they do go to some of them at the back to ask for power. So for that reason, my uncle, my grandpa, we literally be outside waiting. If anybody's preaching, nobody comes near our grandpa's house. So again, that's, that's another form of, you know, uh, religion intolerance. So it could be also be taught 
because what is playing out right now is not just ordinary. It's not just, we're talking about a, a mob, a, a group of people, you know, again, they all almost, they, they all states. Because even and some people, some scholars, some people that were educated, they were coming out to say what the kids were doing. Again, I'm referencing back to the trending, uh, of course. The case of, De the case of Deborah. Yes that what the kids did was okay because they are fighting for their religion. You know, all these folks are coming out to say this. The people are saying it publicly. They're, they're not even, you know, there's no remorse about it. They're, they're coming in public to say it. So uh, we have a little disagree disagreement with you is that it could be also be taught. Again, who knows the people, uh, what those people, um, you know, what, what the agenda was or what they, what they have as an agenda of actually misinterpretation or misinterpretation of the of, of what things are supposed to be or what is written in the Bible or Quran that that that, that people are saying uh other way. Um so so my question is again in the Islamic faith why is it so much rampant that most people really uh, have this one mindset of you know the religion is the best other people are really not <laughs> you know so so I, I think that of course as i said uh or as you said earlier those kind of things is not happening in developed country to me i see it as what leadership uh have to leadership have role to play in it you know mm -hmm. number one if all these kids are in school <laughs> i mean sorry school if with most of them have uh, a job a job again now not not a kid or most people will be have a job or if the education that people are getting in Nigeria is the same because to me it's like it's different. Some people have been taught almost religion for the whole, almost whole week. The secular the, the curriculum is full of their religion. Why some other people probably in the Midwest or in the Southwest they are more open. They are more you know. So what's what can be done? especially in this northern side of the country to educate mm -hmm. the kids to, to know better that, that there are other religions too, apart from the one they believe in. And these people are human beings as well. And, you know, we should actually let go fight for us, no, not for us to be fighting for our own good. So what specifically can be done or that the leader needs to do to, to get this thing under control because it's out of end and, and, and it's keep going from generation to, to generation. Uh, and after well, that, um, today's going to ask to, another question then we wrap it up. To, 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 to answer that, Olani, you first of all have to look into what are the causes of uh, religious intolerance in Nigeria. We, we can see you, by the way, you, you, are, you are offline. I mean, you are, your video is off. my video. There you, go. you first of all need to highlight what are the likely causes okay. of religious intolerance. You cannot talk about solution if you don't bother and work hard on finding out what are the likely causes. Okay. The likely causes, in my opinion, mm. of uh, religious intolerance in Nigeria, mm. you know, uh, marginalization. Okay. On even distribution of wealth. Okay. Oppression. Okay. Government influence. Okay. Sure. Division in government, nepotism, Mm -hmm. and socio-religious bigotry. Of course. This, these are in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have all of this to deal with, we have got to take them one by one. I'm sure other people will have other inputs as regards what are the likely causes of religious intolerance in Nigeria. Talk about uneven distribution of wealth sometimes. We have federal allocations go to states. 
what are the people in charge? What 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 what's the what are the state government doing? The other day I was talking to Shegun, and uh, I said, oh, uh, so, sorry to Tundi, and I, I, I said to him, oh, I know there are some states whom where you can be asking states in the southwest to score 300 in jam, 200 in jam. Some states have to, you know, pass through with scoring only 20, with scoring only 40. And actually, he made me realize there's a government, they have a government name, something deprived, educationally deprived something. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, come on. Come on, who, who, who does this? If a certain state has chosen to keep their people depraved, mm -hmm. why should that be a problem of people of other states? Mm -hmm. See, see, we have so much on even distribution of wealth across Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We have so many people that are being marginalized. And we can say that, you know, us in the Southwest, for instance, we know that we are, I don't want to say we are better educated than our partners in the North, but- it, That's actually what it are, is. It's, that's what <laughs> actually it is. That's what it is. Because if somebody yeah, can be- I don't, I don't want to get your paper in trouble, you know, because we got be. No, it's just calling it. Well, what I'm it is. out yeah. here. You are, you are there. I don't want problem for anyone. But you see, <laughs> the, the, some some states have so marginalized their people. I give you uh, an example. Look at the francophone states, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at francophone states, you have some of them that do have education. You have some of them that barely have education. I use the example of Togo and Republic of Benin and Ghana. They're very close, the three of them, as, uh, as against Mali, mm -hmm. Senegal, and Guinea, only because all they showed them was the Quran. Mm. All they showed them was to go to the madrasas as opposed to the Beninese, the Togolese, the Ghanaians, who were given formal education. And if you look at Krishna Mampo, I'm a huge follower of Krishna Mampo, great, great woman. She's in Afghanistan. She has been speaking to the Taliban leaders in Afghanistan on one thing lately. And you ask me what? Girls' mm -hmm. education. Hmm. Go to her page. She's on Facebook. She's everywhere. If you can't catch her up live, go and watch Krishna Man on do, her Facebook. I, I do watch her time to time. Yeah. She's been with the Taliban in Afghanistan, hammering on the education of women. Mm -hmm. Now, how about governments in the northern part of Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Coming up with strong laws, mm -hmm. with strong measures alike to ensure that every child of school age goes to school. How about getting the alamajaris off of the street? I know that's a topic that you don't go near it in northern Nigeria. Even some of the elitist ones that want to, you know, help to curb the alamajari thing, they do get into trouble. How about giving them formal education? Oh. It, I mean, when you find some people are so marginalized, they become angry as well. They become intolerant. Mm -hmm. Hence, this will intertwine with religion at any given time. At any time there's an uprising, it will be related, obviously, to religion because they're predominantly of a certain religion.
how about distributing wealth evenly? How about marginalizing the people less? How about cutting down on nepotism? Because if I say to you that you can rule out nepotism in any governmental system, I'll be lying to you because even in the in the so-called Sena climb, which I don't like people to use. I know a lot of Nigerians say Sena climb. What is Sena climb? A government is a government. There's fraud everywhere. There's fraud in every government, almost. Okay. How about the UK prime minister has got a relative of his working in government? There's favoritism everywhere. But, you know, the important is let there be control measures mm -hmm. where they will at least be afraid to do it at a very, you know, you know, you, you know, at a scale that you can always smell it and you can always see it. And it will obviously make people angry. It will obviously create and breed intolerance in the people. That's, that's absolutely true. You know, I was telling somebody uh, about this then that, again, in most Zen country, all the all the kids like that we do is to report to like, you know, like agency like SA, FBI, of course, the police department. So they will be on a lot, but there's nobody to actually call. There's no number, there's nobody to, because she's, she's already aware of what is coming and she couldn't call nobody and because of that, you know, this two, this tragedy still happened to that poor uh, girl. Um, to 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 wrap it up, I will want uh, uh, Tony to come in, ask uh, your your last question. Then uh, we'll call it a day. We've we've kept Madame for a very while now. Go ahead, Tunde. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Um, I've actually listened to most of the uh, opinions of like very good guests on the show. We talked about reasons why a lot of things had to be corrected, most especially the aspect of uh, marginalization on the part of the Northern people. Uh, she talked about reasons to why, you know, you have to give the Northern people education so that we don't just continue to hide under the guise of um, religious intolerance. And, um, you know, continue to say there's a clash between religions in Nigeria when there are not. So by this point, I think I have a question. And my question, actually has to do with um, your opinion in respect to uh, what you think we can actually do to reduce the issues with Nigeria, because we've talked about a lot of things. You talked about your uniform distribution of wealth. So, but I, I like to ask because um, or even distribution we, of we, wealth we can talked be about, We talked about religious bigotry, which is very, very important. Mm -hmm prejudice against a person or people on the basis of their membership of a particular religion. Hmm. I, I, we, I, have, we have that to deal with as well. Hmm. Let my religion be my religion. Let your religion be your religion. Give me that respect, that honor that my religion is mine, what well, yours is yours. I'm not going to poke my nose into yours unless I want to learn something about yours and vice versa. Thank you so much, man. Thanks for the clarification. So at this point, I like to know, it's like I like, we, I like to know- Time to begin to get rid of this, you know, obstinate and unreasonable, you know, attachment to a certain belief. Isn't, isn't, it, it shouldn't humanity come before anything? Uh, no, a lot of people will agree with that. Thank you so but, much, sir. Yeah. I, I'd like to continue with my question, actually. I was trying to push a question the other time in respect to your opinion as per what do you think religious tolerance can actually add to Nigerian country? What do you think is a position? of the cordial relationship between most of the religions we have in Nigeria and the sustainers of a better country. Can you, can you take, can you repeat the question? I got to get it. Okay, my, my question was that, um, Sustain, what, what do you think yes. is the position? What is the position of um, the cordial relationship between most of the religions we have in Nigeria 
in the sustenance of a better Nigeria? Um, obviously, listen, if we lead, um, uh, let me start by saying that in organizations here, I use here where I live. If you work in, you know, many departments, you do a training, you know, called diversity training, where people are basically trained to appreciate, understand, respect, acknowledge one another, despite being of various background. Listen, the UK is so, Nigeria does not even come anywhere the UK when it comes to multiculture, multi-ethnicism. Nigeria does not come anywhere. But so how do we do it now? <clears throat> in us having living together in harmony, it will better Nigeria and sustain Nigeria in so many good ways. One, talk about peaceful living. We wouldn't have such things as Deborah being born to death. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Lara. Yes, I can hear you. Tell you. Um, I think I'm going to bring the last question on the show this evening, which is um, uh, what is expected of us to actually talk about before we call it a day. Uh, I'd like to ask this last question. You've talked about a lot of things, a lot of the adverse effects of um, religious intolerance on this country and some of the causes of most of those things. But I'd like you to give us an hint in respect to what we can actually do finally to curb most of those things. You gave us causes, but what are the solutions to most of those things? And what is your advice finally on the show to those who are listening to us and then the government of Nigeria as a country? First and foremost, in a charity, they say begins from home. One, Nigerians need to teach their words, their children, love, peaceful coexistence from a very young age. It must be, that must be the basis of raising our children across country. That's one. Two, the government has a huge role to play in the sense that Nigeria has got an orientation agency. I'm hoping that in going forward to sustain harmonious cohabiting, coexisting amongst people of varied religions. I'm hoping that the orientation agency of Nigeria can have, you know, Nigeria as a government can allow individual states to have their own orientation agencies, this will break it down and it going further into the local government areas where people are orientated accordingly as to how to live life together, whether or not we're of the same faith, whether or not we speak the same language, whether or not we are of the same sexual orientation and so on and so forth. And this will better you know, th th this, this, this can be sustainable if we put them into practice and it will better the lives of Nigerians in general. There's no happy nation if we do not coexist happily. If we do not coexist in love, if we do not coexist peacefully, we cannot have a peaceful nation. You're still muted today. Um, of course, thank you so much for that wonderful um, admonition and you know a solution to all these um, issues. Um, today you are muted anyway, so <laughs> can you hear us today? You have to unmute yourself, okay? Um, but again, I want to say thank you for honoring our invitation. Of course, we're going to bring you back probably on another topic that has to do with even <laughs> which I almost enjoy when you say it's human being before religion so uh, and that's how it's supposed to be uh, for some reason the leadership the government they're trying to deprive people from of course getting this education so rather they use all these tricks to keep people in the darkness because once you're not aware uh, 
or what is right, then you think whatever you're doing is the best. And of course, again, as you said, when people are being marginalized, disenfranchised, they do not know better. They're just waiting for any chaos to happen and they will explode. Ben, so. let, let, let people at local government levels, let them insist that their people have got to have education. Okay. Wonderful. You can, if you go to France, you can mm -hmm. see the dis it's so disparate, you mm -hmm. know, between the the uh, educated francophones and the non-educated francophones. It is so it stares at you. Wow. You can see the huge difference. Wow. Wow. It's the same like we're talking about. We're talking about about Nigeria. Let mm. the people at local government level, at LCDA levels, let them insist our people have got to have education. Mm. Thank you so much, madam. And uh, again, and stop waiting for government at federal level. Mm. Yes, I mean, to me, when I say government, they're all in the box. I'm not talking about only just the presidency alone, but of course, all the branches from councillorship all the way to the top. I have part to do in it because now, if they don't Deborah pass all these bills. How many more done. Deborahs are we going to have? How many more Deborahs do we know that we're going to have? Hey, thank God thank, thank for social media. Are not being rightly educated. Yes, thank God for social media. If not social media, we won't, thank God that they film themselves. They put themselves in the, in the trouble. If not that, people will not know. And a lot of it is going on daily. And again, well, they must, they and must I'm hoping that the right, the right justice is meted out to them. Ma, sh shortly, shortly before you leave, I'd like you to just drop a comment in respect to uh, the position of the state government as per how these people, like the perpetrators of this kind of, um, you know, crime can be punished. We had the kind of, um, you know, charges that were preferred against these people were not even in relation to murder at all. What do you have to say with this? Uh, to this, we had they were they were framed with um, a lot of simple offenses when they actually killed. You think Nigeria is a country where uh, someone who has been damaged, whose right has been you know deprived of, can actually get justice? Um, in the days that I was growing up in Lagos State, yes, justice, you know, was upheld, you know, at every instance, you know, where it need be, and I believe that, you know. I mean, without, and I know we're rounding up. All I want to say is that for all that has been leveled against this culprit, I would, you know, advise that human rights activists, you know, come up against, I don't care if they bring 200 lawyers, all of them sons, <laughs> to, to stand in court for this culprit. I, I, I am imploring that all human rights activists in Nigeria will come up and stand against the state government, ensuring that justice is meted out to, it, uh, uh, how do you kill someone and you get away with it? Um, just now I'm, I'm, checking, I'm checking the news and like the updates. Actually, the, even the police spokesman from Shokoto, they're saying that the fellow on this Senegalese kind of, you know, like a yellow dress that the man probably is from Niger Republic. Yeah. I came to Nigeria. I thought, to we got over that. I thought they said that a few days ago and I thought yes. we got over it. And, so, you know, a policeman had come out to say, oh no, that's not true. He's, yeah. you know, he's with the police. So that this is where, this is where rights activists have got to stand up and lend their voice just so that this death, this murder will not go unpunished. That, that, that's, that's, of course, that's another way to look at it, of course. Um, but um, if they have to get, yeah. obviously they know how they, these rights activists, they know how to do it. They can get, you know, foreign, you know, right activists involved and, you know, escalate it even to, <laughs> come on. Right. Again, I would say even getting it right from selecting leader now would actually be the best, best, best of the best solution. Because again, we have folks that are not going to implement nothing because they know that they have some people like that in a corner, just in case of anything that they can quickly manipulate to fight for them, just to be on their own side. So 
with that is political at some point. But again, maybe one of these days we're going to invite you that we're going to talk more on uh, other relevant issues that of course have to do with human beings because that is what we're going to keep dealing with. Um, unfortunately, the religion that of course that meant for good stuff make our life better, give us guidelines to 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 you know uh, be a better neighbor, be a better of course, we're living a right. Yes, yeah. but um, of course, any good thing can be changed, can be uh, turned around to be a bad thing. And that's what's playing now. Again, to me, it's all about security. If you, there's a security architecture that is very good, you can. You can only try, but it's not going to be this rampant that you can just go to somebody, jungle justice still all over the place in Nigeria, where that, we are. That, is, that is what I said. When, when, that's what I said when you asked that we made comparison between the UK. Yes. And yes. It's only because likely culprits know mm -hmm. that they, 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 they will be apprehended. Mm -hmm. There's crime everywhere, Olani. There's crime in all parts of the world. Of course, but you know what? Because people know there are deterrents. That is why they run away from doing it. Exactly. And that, that security I was talk, talking about. And um, they know that the deterrents will be upheld to mm -hmm. the world. Of course. Of course. The corporate, all of them because will be into justice. Somebody is thinking, Oh, I formed part of the Wahhabis, Wahhabis group, and I know that some big Wahhabis men, they will be behind me, they will ensure that I do not get, you know, reprimanded. I do not get the 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 the, post, the, the deterrent that mm -hmm. I should get. Then people, could, I mean, things like this will continue to, you know, there will be many more deporters. Of course, of course. Um, again, thank you, madam. Um, they think in time, they say saves nine. Mm -hmm. If we don't teach it now, it will continue to fear. Thank yes. you very much, Alani. Thank you very thank, much. Thank, thank you so much, madam. And again, thank you uh, to all our viewers. Uh, it's, you know, thank it's been you. wonderful. Thank you to all the viewers. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, madam. Again, ma'am, if you don't mind, please go and follow us on our on our page. And of course, if you have your own uh, page, your you know your TV, your TV or radio that you operate in in, in the UK. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what she did. I know you are on her personality. Do you uh do you do radio show or or you do TV show? TV show. Oh, TV show. Okay. If you don't mind, if you share it with us too, we can also follow up. That way we can you know subscribe to your channel. Again, want to say okay. thank you to you for honoring our invitation. We'll be inviting you again for other topic. Uh Tunde, a uh, big thank you to you too for. Of course, we have a little technical difficulty over there, but overall, we were able to make it happen. Thank you so much, and uh, we we'll say see you again. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you right. for having me. Right, <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Bye. You're welcome.